Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? What we're going to talk about right now is something that not a lot of people, I don't think, talk about. And this concerns every single one of us. And, you know, it, it's, it's scary to even think that these statistics are as bad as they are. Between 2010 and 2019, crime rates consistently fell throughout American cities, right? Violent and property offenses dipped in many cities of all sizes until the pandemic struck. In 2020, violent crime surged in American cities, and this troubling trend continued in the pandemic second year. You had murder, you had the R word, you had assault reports rose again slightly in 2021. Now, to assess the current state of urban safety nationwide, I analyzed the latest crime statistics from American cities of all populations that was provided by the FBI. I broke down the numbers in crime categories and specific locations to pinpoint the nature of threats for you. So is crime increasing in the U.S. in 2023? Well, violent crimes remained higher during the first half of 2023 compared to the first half of 2019. While homicide has receded from its peak in 2021, levels remain 24% higher than its first half of 2019. If you wanted to know what state has the highest crime rate in 2023, you have Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas, Alabama, Oklahoma, Florida, Missouri, South Carolina, and then Tennessee. What cities in the U.S. have the highest crime rate in 2023? St. Louis, Missouri. Detroit, Michigan, Baltimore, Maryland, Kansas City, Missouri, Memphis, Tennessee, Kansas City, um, sorry, Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, Anchorage, Alaska, Bakersfield, California, Little Rock, Arkansas, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Corpus Christi, Texas. Now, which city has the most murders in 2023? St. Louis, Missouri. And the notable issue here is the city has the highest homicide rate in the country. So, what is the fastest growing crime in the U.S.? It's identity theft. It's the nation's fastest growing crime wave that hits seniors the most. So, what year in America had the most crime? Violent crime nearly quadrupled between 1990 and its peak in 19, or sorry, 1960, and its peak is, was in uh, 1991. Property crime more than doubled over that same period since the 1990s. However, contrary to common misconception, crime in the U.S. declined steadily and has significantly declined by the late 90s and also in the early 2000s. So what state has the lowest crime rate in 2023? Well, that would be Vermont. The safest state to live in the USA is in Vermont. It has the lowest violent crime rate in America with only 1.46 per 1,000 people out of the population of 647,064. So what is the most unreported crime in America right now? Well, it's the R word. And it's known to be one of the most unreported crimes, despite the fact that studies estimate that one in six women and one in 21 men will be a victim of attempted or completed forcible R word in our lifetimes. Only 16 to 40 percent of our words are reported to law enforcement. So what is the largest growing crime in the world? Well, that would be human trafficking. Okay. It is among the world's fastest growing crim criminal enterprise, and it's estimated to be about $150 billion a year global industry. It is a form of modern day slavery that profits from the exploitation of our most vulnerable populations. Through, the, uh, through rates vary widely, okay, by location, 
by population. Nationwide numbers show that crime remains a persistent problem Excuse me. Uh, in, in towns and cities all across the country. And violent crimes have proven particularly pervasive across American cities and total violent crimes jumped sharply in 2020 and rose slightly in 2021, leaving the nation's cities more dangerous today than they were 10 years ago. Robbery is only violent crime to drop in American cities over the last decade while murder has jumped nearly 50%. So the news is more encouraging concerning property crimes. Uh, though property offenses climbed slightly over the last year, they're down significantly in American cities since 2011. Overall, urban property crime has dropped more than a quarter and burglaries have been cut in half. Only motor vehicle theft has climbed in the last decade. And these numbers reflect combined uh, crime statistics of cities spanning all sizes, realities, can change widely depending on whether you live in a small town or a major metropolitan area. The recent surge in urban crime has centered on major American cities and the nation has nearly 40 cities with populations exceeding one half million people. And collectively, their crime rates last year jumped almost 10 times the national urban average. So total violent crimes jumped nearly 10% in large American cities between 2020 and in 2021, continuing a decade long trend of rising violent crime rates. New York is one of the nation's most violent cities and Chicago has become a go-to example, if you will, for highlighting uh, gun violence. Still, Neither city was the most dangerous when looking at violent crimes per capita. Among America's largest cities like Memphis, Detroit, Milwaukee, they all rank near the top for individual violent crimes. Detroit's murder rate, it dropped slightly in 2021 yet it still ranks as the second most deadly behind only Memphis with a murder rate of six times the national urban average. So then you have Denver and you have Albuquerque. They emerged as large cities with elevated risks of the R word. Houston posted the highest robbery rate per 100,000 citizens. So though the property crime rate across all American cities hardly grew during 2021, large cities had a 22% increase over the previous year. Now you have Memphis and you have Milwaukee and they appear near the top of the property crime categories as well, but still large cities of the Pacific Northwest present a competition with high rates of burglary, and larceny and motor vehicle theft. And then you have Portland. Portland has seen a spike in property crimes that law enforcement attributes to staffing shortages. At the same time, Washington enacted dramatic police reform in 2021 that may have hindered Seattle's handling of property crime. So you have also medium-sized American cities recorded the most impressive improvement in crime rates in 2021. And this population category was the only one where violent and property crimes decreased compared to the previous year. Violent crime across all medium-sized cities decreased by 7% in the latest national report, making it the only size category to notch a reduce reduction um, over the previous year. So St. Louis was the deadliest medium-sized city in America with a murder rate higher than any large-sized city. 
despite a murder rate that dropped by nearly one quarter from the previous year. Its per capita killings remained eight times the national average, urban, for the urban average, that is. So then you have Cleveland. It is the second deadliest mid-range city and the only medium-sized municipality to register in the top three of every violent crime category. New Orleans, they're the second in murders and R word for mid-sized cities last year, dropping from the top three in both offenses. St. Louis's criminal problems extended to property offenses and the gateway to the West led mid-sized, medium-sized cities in larcenies and had the second highest motor vehicle theft rate. Tulsa, however, they proved the most notorious among the mid-sized urban areas for property crimes, and it ranked within the top three cities for burglary and larceny and motor vehicle theft rates. So though crimes are rarer in small American cities than in larger urban areas, violent and property offenses, they jumped by double digits in 2021, leaving crime rates nearly equal to mid-sized cities. So violent crimes, they jumped 15% in small cities in 2021, leaving the rate at 8% higher than it was 10 years ago. And R offenses, you know, the R word offenses made the most notable climb. The 24% increase over the previous year was the most for any size category. Additionally, the murder rate in small cities has leaped nearly 50% in the last decade, demonstrating how violence has permeated on all levels of society. So based on the latest crime statistics, Mobile, Alabama is undoubtedly the nation's most dangerous small city, posting the highest rate of murders, R word, and assaults of any locale in the categories. Pueblo, Colorado also ranked in the top three for multiple offenses. Surprisingly, Salt Lake City featured the third highest rate for R word among small cities, which may tie to recent complaints of investigative and prosecutorial negligence. Mobile, Alabama nearly completed a dubious sweep of every major crime category, but finished second to Tacoma, Washington for motor vehicle theft rates among small cities with almost 8,000 larcenies per 100,000 residents, Mobile had one third more than any other small city. So then you have Colorado. Colorado posted two small cities with major property crime issues, Pueblo for burglary and Westminster for motor vehicle theft. So now I categorized extra small cities as those with 10,000 to 99,999 people. Smaller populations make per capita numbers more vulnerable to dramatic swings, revealing surprising uh, surges and danger in unexpected places. The murder rate in extra small cities has grown 42% in 10 years. Statistics also show that R word occurs in extra small cities nearly as often as in the largest urban areas. And only in extra small cities is a citizen more likely to be R word than robbed. Now, when you have giant metropolitan areas, the record far more killings each year than extra small cities, yet some smaller towns have a far higher rate of murder per capita. Now these three extra small cities posted murder rates higher than 80 per 100,000 residents. And Greenwood, South Carolina was the deadliest. Yeah, so the frequency of R word in the three most dangerous extra small cities also dwarfed the rate of far larger cities. So I'm gonna try and pronounce this town for you. It's YP Salanti. Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti, <laughs> Michigan. 
it registered 275 R words per 100,000 residents. I know, more than twice the number in nearby Detroit. Even as property crimes grew across the board in small American cities, extra small cities showed improvement in every property crime category. Now, despite these encouraging property crime numbers for extra small cities, some outliers post numbingly high offense rates. The most eye-catching is Tukwila, Washington, T-U-K-W-I-L-A, where a remarkable rate of over 12 thousand larcenies per 100,000 residents outpaces any other city by more than 50%. In the heart of the SeaTac corridor between Seattle and Tacoma, the city claims that hosting many businesses and commuters compared to only 20,000 inhabitants inflates its annual crime rate. So I hope this helped you and, you know, made you see, uh, because, you know, I, I feel that it's extremely important for us to have our eyes wide open and our head on a swivel at all times. It doesn't matter if you live in New York City or like that little town that I couldn't even pronounce, Tequila, Washington, or, or that Ypsilanti or whatever it was called. It doesn't matter if you live in the smallest, smallest town or the biggest, biggest city. Crime is everywhere and it's scary as all heck. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, especially for us ladies. Please don't go shopping by yourself. Take a friend with you or, you know, uh, uh, you know, your neighbor or, you know, it, your husband or your significant other or whatever the case may be. Men, if, if one of your lady friends asks you to go shopping, please know that there's a reason for it. Okay. It's just not safe anymore. All right. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I will see you in the next one, okay? You stay safe, you stay positive, you keep prepping, and as always, fear less. Ciao.